ran into a stream and the water would just go through your fingers. That's what my life was like, it just slipped through my fingers and I couldn't grab hold onto anything. I fell out of control and because I was studying so much, my schoolwork and, you know, my time was consumed by that, that I sort of thought, no, hang on a minute, you know, needed some something to help me feel like I did have some control over what was happening rather than just the world controlling me. It slowly takes over and then it's in control and you're kind of at its mercy really. Um, it convinces you that it's your friend and for a long time I felt like it was my only friend and um, it's the only one who saw how I felt and the only one who wanted what I wanted. I was alright once I was asleep and it used to take me ages to get to sleep because I'd be like freezing cold and I had to wear loads of layers but you just didn't want to wake up the next day because you knew it was just going to start all over again. I really felt like I wasn't me anymore and I felt like I'd become someone I didn't know, I didn't like. I wanted to be the happy, bouncy person that I'd been the really lively person. <laughs> It's that kind of treading on eggshells thing and no one really knows what to say or how to approach it because they want to be your friend, obviously, and they want to support you, but they don't know how to. If you break your leg, people can see that you've got a cast and can see your pain. If you're ill on the inside, people can't see that. I felt like no one understood how I was feeling because all the doctors in my family were all saying that I should be... Um, eating and I just, it was very stressful because I didn't think that they understood how I felt. So you kind of feel very isolated and very alone, especially when your friends don't understand. They thought that it was taboo and they thought I was going to bite off their head or, you know, I think they, they became kind of afraid. And I think also you look a bit scary, you, like someone with an eating disorder can tend to look a little bit... Um, almost intimidating. If I saw some of my friends, uh, I would generally avoid them, try and get away from people, trying to get, get away from actually interacting with anyone. I don't know, I was in my own little world, like I was like totally disconnected from everything. I didn't think about like any of my family or anything, so like my mum was like really, really ill. I didn't realise it was happening, I thought it was normal. Um, and it, it wasn't until it had gone far too out of control that I realised what was happening. When I realised I had it, it was good because I think that's the first step to recovery, but it was not so good because it had got to a stage where I didn't have the power to get rid of it on my own. Through going through this, it's taught me that talking is a good thing. And like, if you're upset, even if it's something small, it's good to talk about it because no one should have to feel alone and no one should have to feel like they haven't got anyone to talk to. I've learned to appreciate being alive, <laughs> absolutely. I've learned how important health is and I've learned to use my voice instead of my body as a way to express things when I'm struggling. I think that's the most important thing. When you have an eating disorder, you don't... You either don't feel you can talk to people or you don't know how to talk to people. What I'd like to say about eating disorders is that they're not vanity. They're not attention-seeking because often we hide our behaviours. They are a serious mental disorder and they can be very dangerous. The physical manifestation of your eating disorder is you screaming, look, something is wrong. Um, and now I can, I can say, OK, I'm having a bad day, or I'm struggling with this, or I'm upset. And you don't have to always be happy to be well. To me, it's so important that people know that recovery from an eating disorder is absolutely, totally possible. And you can go on and you can live fully and it's beautiful. Like, that life is so much more beautiful than I ever imagined it possibly could be. You're just normal eventually. And you don't think about food as an issue anymore. 
and that kind of comes with the acceptance that sometimes you might eat too much and sometimes you might not eat enough because that's what everybody does when they don't have an eating disorder. Um, and it's hard to put into words the freedom that comes with recovery.